Hey guys, welcome back to another video of All Things Nerd. My name is Caleb. Uh, this is the second episode of the review for the HBO series The Last of Us. Uh, this was going over episode two. Uh, I like this one a lot. I like that they kind of starting from the beginning, uh, jumping back in time again, kind of going um, and showing just how the um, virus has kind of spread. Um, it started over in Indonesia. They brought in that lady. Um, to kind of look at the um, specimens that they had uh, just to kind of make sure is this the uh, the cordyceps um, you know slowly make its way into uh, humanity and be able to actually use humans as a vessel because uh, before that you know they had explained that that was not something that was possible unless uh, I believe it was the temperature was the temperature was too high for them to be able to uh, live um, within the human body just kind of confirm me, see if that was real. Um, I like that they took that route to kind of make the cordyceps or this virus their own. I know in the games uh, they had the spores. So I'm kind of hoping that they bring the spores back and that's something that's going to be um, within this um, universe of The Last of Us because I know this one is kind of a little bit different than the game. Uh, they want it to be something that is going to be that true adaptation. And I think that's something that's going to bring people back to this show and it's going to make people want to continuously watch the show um, is just how true this show is to um, being a perfect adaptation that we want to see from video games because there's not a lot of games, not a lot of shows uh, that are based off of video games that have done, um, you know, any sort of justice to that IP. Uh, this one has to, seems to be the only show now that I have seen that has been that true adaptation, um, of, just apart from changing some small things, but just kind of making it their own as opposed to changing it because, well, we didn't read the script. We didn't read anything about the IP. So we're going to just do what we want to do, you know, just kind of changing certain things, uh, because I know they want it to seem realistic, uh, especially with the, I was kind of reading up on some things, didn't really read too much into it, but I know kind of the reason why they didn't introduce the spores was they just want something because of the cordyceps, um, that virus is something that is real, um, you know, based off of that uh, virus with ants and the whole fungal um, growth. So I know they want to kind of keep it within that realm of realism, but obviously take that a step further. Uh, so hopefully eventually they'll bring in the spores and that's something that we can see from the game brought into this universe with HBO. But I liked it a lot. Um, I know after the first episode when I watched it, I think it was 20 seconds in when Joel had the coffee cup and he's walking in there. She goes, orange juice, <laughs> vitamin C. I, I felt like for sure, you know, people sometimes can be hesitant. I love Pedro Pascal, but I know some people can feel hesitant when they see um, these actors on screen portraying characters that they've known and loved for years. So I know that's something that could be a little hard to get used to, but I honestly didn't feel that way. I thought I was going to feel that way when I watched the show and just coming into it. Um, the first episode, I automatically felt these are great actors. They're going to do the show justice. Um, and I think just after each episode, we're just going to enjoy the show even more. Um, Second episode, yeah, I loved it a lot. Uh, I know they changed a couple different things there. A, a lot of the uh, the area, actually, I can't remember in the game if they fought anybody coming up to that building at the museum. Um, I'll have to ask my brother. I meant to have him on for this podcast, but uh, um, sadly, his uh, my nephew, his baby, is uh, sick at the moment, so he's he's been watching him. Uh, make sure you know he's doing better, but uh, wanted to at least do the episode today. Um, but I know I couldn't remember if they had fought Fedra or anybody outside of the museum and then they make their way in. But I think they just kind of make their way to the museum, uh, eventually see the people laying on the ground, you know, that had gotten infected, gotten shot. So I couldn't remember a lot of the key differences. But the one thing that I did love about this episode that they explained was just kind of further, further explaining just what the differences with their virus compared to what was in the game. I really like that this one, they had mentioned, um, you know, anywhere you step, uh, whether if it's, it could be miles away, you know, if there's any sound, uh, you know, any sort of movement, if you touch a place that, that 
cord the cordyceps are the virus uh, they can feel that they can sense that from a mile away you know you're going to either get one that's going to come to you or you're going to get thousands and i really like that because i think it just really further expands just kind of the the understanding of you're not safe anywhere you go is potentially dangerous uh, most likely 100 percent going to be dangerous so any sort of you know, adventuring and sort of kind of quest that you're going to do in the outside world is pretty much just a suicide mission. So I like that they expanded on that because it just, it just makes it even creepier. <laughs> just knowing, um, like when they were walking up the stairs, I thought for sure something was going to happen right then and there, you know, and then obviously that's when you see the clickers later on, spoiler alerts, which obviously play the game, but still, um, <laughs> uh, when they were walking up the staircase, you know, Joel's in front, Ellie in the middle, Tess in the back, walking up the staircase. Um, and then Ellie steps on one of the arms. It's just kind of just explodes, turns into ash and makes some noise. Um, I thought for sure right there, they were going to show that because they had mentioned it. Oh, you know, this is what happens. They can feel it miles away. I thought that all those zombies that they have shown earlier on, uh, that were outside where there was just like hundreds of them laying in the ground. They would react to the sunlight <laughs> whenever, whenever the uh, sun would pass through. I thought for sure they were going to re react right then and there, but I'm glad that they saved that big moment um, later on. Like I said, spoiler alert, we'll kind of go into the episode a bit more. Um, but just that difference where Tess, you know, she gets, she gets bit, you know, as in the game, um, they explain that. I like how she shows it the same way too. Cause she goes, you know, holy crap, she's infected. And he goes, you know, show me. Um, and that's when she kind of does the whole, you know, kind of sassy sort of <laughs> colder, you know, uh, collar, you know, pop showing the bite. Oops. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, I like how a lot of it stays true to the dialogue in the game, even though, as we mentioned in the first episode, they were oddly specifically told not to look at the source material for the game. But it kind of amazes me. I'm actually kind of glad that they did because one, I was watching an interview from uh, Troy Baker and it was actually, I believe it was the first episode uh, in their podcast series on the HBO Max uh, YouTube channel. And it was just something I never thought of. With Joel, you, you feel the same way, whether if it's the Uncharted series, you have Tom Holland, uh, yeah. Sully, <laughs> with... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm blanking on his name. Mark. <laughs> Actor. Somebody's going to have to tell me. Anyways, uh, he plays in Ted. I, I keep forgetting his name. But anyways, he plays Sully in The Last of Us TV show. Um, But, you know, a lot of people feel that way. That it's like you see somebody on screen. You're like, this is not the character that I loved. It's a completely different face. It's a different voice. It's not them. They're not the character. But something that Troy Baker said was, you know, with Pedro Pascal playing Joel, uh, is you know he wants to see somebody on a screen that's going to teach him something about the character that he didn't know about you know teach teach you something about that character that you know and show them that character in a light that you had never seen them before um just kind of reinventing that character and that's and that's what i like i like hearing that because you know that's that's a positivity you know you're passing down the torch to another actor to play this character that you have played but i think we're gonna see these characters kind of in a different light and get something extra we didn't get um, out of these characters from these new actors. So I, I appreciate that. But as oddly as it was to watch the show, knowing beforehand, before it even dropped, that they were told specifically not to play the games, don't get any source material before playing these characters, it felt a little odd to me. I just, I just don't know why you wouldn't, but... The further along that the show goes, I, I don't think it was, I don't think that was a bad thing. Um, I think it's something that, you know, they're going to own these characters themselves, make it into that character they're going to portray. It's going to be something a little bit different, but I don't think that's something terrible. And the, the show's great. I think it's one of the best adaptations I've ever seen. Uh, but kind of going back to Tess, um, I know we're kind of running through the episode, but just kind of wanted to highlight some of the things I had noticed in the episode watching it. I uh, watched it about, I don't know, maybe half an hour ago. It's probably been an hour now. So I'm trying to like process everything that I've seen on the show. Um, but kind of going back to Tess, 
with the whole ending i know they had changed that where she had fended off the group i think this one was one of the most realistic um just kind of portrayals of a person in that situation you know you're you're bit you're somebody that knows you're not going to live for very long especially compared to you know where you have another person ellie who's standing there in front of you where you know she's been bit not only one time but she's bit she's been bit twice because i cannot talk <laughs> uh you know not only has she been bit one time but she's been bit twice and knowing that somebody's going to live after being bit twice but you have mere what minutes maybe day by the end of the day to live you know obviously it's just like i feel like a lot of movies and shows they're going to kind of show characters as in the whole you know i'm going to be the martyr i'm going to be the um you know, the one to kind of make the sacrifice for you guys to escape. It's kind of kind of be this badass moment, basically. And I like how they kind of just change. I don't know why I'm doing like bat wings. <laughs> I think I'm just like, hello. <laughs> uh, some holy sort of stance. I don't know what you call it. But uh, I, I like how they kind of took this more realistic route. There, there's a lot of shows, movies and games, like stuff you'll see. And obviously games, you know, a lot of things are going to suspend your disbelief, but and kind of change things, make things cool. Hollywood, but I like that they changed this. They, I feel like they made her more human. Somebody that's going to be in that spot of, I have maybe by the end of the day to live. You're not going to think in that moment, I'm going to do something super badass. <laughs> you know, watch me, you know, hold six grenades and let all the zombies come to me. I'm going to say some super cool one liner and I'm going to blow myself up. Nobody's going to think of that. And I, I kind of like how they made it where, the lighter she was having trouble with the lighter flipping through um trying to get it to work and kind of an odd moment uh <laughs> i i saw a lot of people were talking about this but that zombie kiss at the end of the episode um i was reading up on some of it because i was trying to just think myself why would they make the zombie essentially kiss her because just the way he kind of moves almost looks like he's still human like he hasn't fully trans you know transform into the zombie Cordyceps hasn't fully taken him over, even though it has. And I did some reading on it as well. And a lot of people were saying that they kind of felt like it was very symbolic of just kind of like the, you know, Judas's kiss, the, the kiss is death. And I, I could agree with that. Um, but I kind of felt like I was reading up on it and somebody else was saying, because of the Cordyceps, you know, with like, let's say you're stepping on it, they fill it a mile away, one comes or a hundred, you know, or a thousand it almost feels like that the virus is just going to kind of react, I guess, in a way how, and I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I feel like I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of virus out there where, you know, let's say there's something that is aggressive, you know, something that you have that's aggressive, like this virus on the show, you know, maybe that the more combative you are to this virus, whether if it's fighting off a zombie, so you're actually physically combative, or if you're doing something medically to combat this virus, maybe it's going to fight back harder. As you see with the clickers, you know, the more that they fought them, the louder that the sounds get, the more come, the harder they're gonna fight you, unless you take it out. Maybe by not doing anything and kind of just letting something, you know, happen like like her like she just kind of froze up and stood there which i feel like is far more realistic situation that would happen you kind of just freeze up something when you know you just kind of let it happen basically and then get taken over or whatever <laughs> but uh at least that would be me um but i felt like that's kind of the feeling i got from that from that scene was maybe that the more combative you are either way it doesn't matter what you do in the end eventually it's going to end in um being taken over by this virus there, there's no good ending it's it's gonna be bad and so that's kind of why i took from that scene i thought they did a really good uh that they did really great with this episode liked a lot i like how some things are changed slightly and not anything that's going to completely alter the story but mainly just for the fact of here's kind of our version of the tv show or of the uh, original ip here's our version but it doesn't necessarily deviate completely from the game. So the game isn't really like a either or. You don't need to play the game to understand the show. You don't need to play watch the show to understand the video game. It's kind of a, it's not even an either or. It's a whichever one you want to <laughs> you want to you know watch or play. Um, 
but that's that's what I like, and I like that's the direction that they're taking this show. Uh, but that was just some of the things I kind of want to talk about. What were you guys' thoughts about the show, episode two of The Last of Us by HBO? Uh, that was just some of the cool things I liked. I, I like just kind of being able to. I find myself more just watching the show to be kind of like pinpointing: is this location based off of the uh, the actual game, like the layout, game design? Did they set up the um, the scenery to look exactly like the game? Is this a location that I know? Is there something within the scene that I'm supposed to kind of go, oh, hey, uh, what's that, what's that movie? <laughs> the movie. <laughs> um, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> uh, you know, is there something in the scene that is an Easter egg that I'm supposed to, um, you know, notice? And that's the cool thing about the show. That's, that's what I like. There's, I know there's a lot of Easter eggs, but uh, let me know what you guys thought about episode two. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm super excited to just continue watching the show, um, be able to see more of the Easter eggs, but just see the show progress more and be able to kind of watch what I know about the video game to see in a different light on, you know, the live, the live screen on the big screen, <laughs> be able to see the li live action. Cause I love, uh, movies like this. Uh, very excited about it, but let me know, you know, down below in the comments, guys, what you guys thought, some of the scenes that you um, enjoyed or little things maybe that I didn't e even notice that you guys have noticed. Um, let us know down below in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like that. Um, if you guys like more content like this or you want to continue watching some of these episodes uh, along with us, just kind of conversing about these episodes. Um, really, that's kind of what these episodes are about, at least. I just want to know what you guys kind of thought. Um, I'm dumb. <laughs> Things are going to go over my head. So if you guys want to let me know in the comments again, uh, you know, some things that you guys have seen that I didn't notice, uh, we'll just kind of converse down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Peace.